Circles are symmetrical in all directions. If identical objects are arranged in circular symmetry, then everything looks the same. First choice can be any seat. All seats are identical, so this reduces to one choice. So, the people who break the symmetry are the first choosers. Once the first choice is made, all seats now become distinct relative to the first chooser. The, fir the first seat choice breaks the symmetry of the circle. If there were eight seats, the next one chooses out of seven, the one after that chooses out of six, the one after that chooses out of five, and so on. In other words, the number of choices is n minus one factorial. Circles are allowed to rotate. Circles have rotational symmetry in that all points rotated to the 12 o'clock position look like any other points moved to the 12 o'clock position. When a first choice is made in any position, rotating the choice to 12 o'clock shows how any first choice is really the same as any other first choice. For multiple, multiple choices, this means that if it's possible for you to rotate the circle so that you get the same arrangement of choices again, then they both count as one arrangement. For example, here's a circle with 12 identical choices to be made. Um, the circles are supposed to be all identical, or be little, the little, little blue circles are supposed to be identical arranged around this big black circle. Um, and you can actually choose here. We'll call that the 12 o'clock position. Now if I choose here, I can simply rotate that to the 12 o'clock position and I can show you that it's the same as any other choice. So if this is first and this is second, I can also call this first and this one's second if I rotate this to the 12 o'clock position. So I can make these two choices look like these two choices. And in fact, they're considered the same. To recap, at the beginning there is no distinct position, no definite left or right. Permutations are calculated relative to the first choice. Circles can rotate to weed out duplicates. Sometimes you can even flip a circle like you can for some bracelets to check duplicates. but it's not a reasonable thing to do for everything, like for example a circular table. Mirror image arrangements are considered distinct for tables, but not for bracelets. So, example of a circular permutation. Four boys and four girls are going to sit around a campfire. How many ways can they sit if they sit completely at random? Well, we have this idea of uh, the girl making the first choice, and that leaves, for example, if, if any, well, it doesn't have to be a girl making the first choice because the kids are allowed to sit completely at random. So that means if a person, any of the eight people make a first choice, that means the second person in the lineup makes a choice out of the remaining seven seats. So that gives him seven distinct choices relative to the first chooser. And then the third person comes in out of, and chooses out of the remaining six. The fourth person comes in, chooses out of the remaining five, and so on. And, uh, and they proceed from there. So then what happens is that you get eight minus one factorial as your answer. Um, 8 minus 1 factorial would be 7 factorial. How about if we introduce a restriction? Six girls and six boys are to sit around a large circular table. How many ways can they sit if each boy must sit next to a girl and a boy sits first? Okay, so each boy sits next to a girl and a boy sits first. So then here we have a situation where um, a boy chooses the first um, the first seat, and that leaves um, now for only boys. They may choose against the remaining five seats because remember, two boys cannot sit next to each other, uh, and boys are only allowed to sit next to girls. That means two boys cannot sit next to each other. So that means 
uh, for the remaining five boys, there's only five choices out of the 12 seats, believe it or not. So that's five factorial, um, or 120. And then you have the girls. The girls come in. Now, their first choice, uh, the first chooser is, I mean, the first seat is already chosen by a boy. So all of the girls uh, choose relative to all the boys meaning that they're out of the remaining six seats, there are actually six factorial choices for um, a, um, a total number of choices of five factorial times six factorial. Twelve pictures of Liam's best friends are to be placed in a circular arrangement. There are four pictures of Mick, three of Luigi, and five of Tanner. How many possible circular arrangements can there be? So here one imagines uh, the the five pictures of Tanner, the three of uh, the three of Luigi, and um, the four pictures of Mick. Um, now, as you can see in this depiction, they're identical with respect to each other, but now we have we treat the photos of the individual people as identical. So we have five identical pictures. Of, uh, of Tanner and uh, three identical pictures of Luigi and four identical pictures of Mick. And how many ways can we arrange these um, with respect to, with, with respect made to um, uh, identical objects and numbers of arrangements? So this is a permutation. Uh, the first choice, you know, it's affected by first choosers, but we have identical objects as well. It turns out that you have still n minus 1 factorial choices, but you have to divide out all of the identical items. So there are five factorial permutations of Tanner. There are um, four factorial permutations of Mick and three factorial permutations of Luigi. And really 12 minus 1 factorial is really just 11 factorial divided by 5 factorial, 4 factorial, 3 factorial. So that's an that's a uh, example of uh, a circular permutation with identical items. So as to the matter of circular permutations of key rings and bracelets, a bracelet can be flipped over. Its formula then if, n my, if it's n minus 1 um, for the circle, we have to divide by 2 because of the ability to flip over a bracelet and treat this as the same circle as we had before. Uh, this means that there are only three charms to place on a bracelet, uh, that if there are only three charms to place on the bracelet, there is only one possible permutation. In other words, 3 minus 1 factorial, which is 2, divided by 2 which is just one. Example four, bracelets or keyring permutations. We're going to choose a bracelet here. There appears to be a clasp on this bracelet, but for part A, we're just going to ignore this clasp and treat this bracelet as uniform, just as made of a uniform chain, all the links being identical. So five charms are to be placed on a bracelet. How many ways can, be, can they be arranged if there's no clasp? Remember, you can flip over this bracelet. So if there's no clasp, remember, it's 5 minus 1, which is 4 factorial. 4 factorial divided by 2. So in this case, there are only um, 24 divided by 2, which is only 12 arrangements with no clasp. However, if there is a clasp, that's a game changer because if we have a circular object with a clasp, Notice I can undo the clasp, and I suddenly have a linear arrangement of, a, of what used to be a circular object. So undoing the clasp actually makes it linear. So now I have a linear permutation, and now the numbers of arrangements, because the clasp makes a distinct position, is now 5 factorial. It reverts all the way back to 5 factorial, no division by 2, and no subtraction. Video written, hosted, and researched by yours truly. Ideas gleaned from YouTube, mostly Scott Hirsch's tutorial on circular permutations. Illustrations generated by the YED graph editor. 
slides generated by MS PowerPoint, Campfire Clip Art credited to the Clip Art Panda website, which uh, the bit.ly shortened link is right here.